Hello, developers. In this video, I will be going over on how to make a very simple directional animation system. Without further ado, let's continue forward with the tutorial. Firstly, go ahead and create a local script inside of Starter Player and inside of Starter Character Scripts. Be sure to name it Animate or else it won't override the default Animate script. Now, make a folder inside of the Animate script and name it Animations. And now inside the Animations folder, create three animation objects for holding the animation ID. Be sure to name it the same as it is in the video. Unfortunately, Roblox does not support sharing animation ID, so you'll have to create the three animations accordingly. And after exporting it, set the animation ID of those three to match the animation ID you got from exporting. Now, we'll start scripting. And while doing that, I'll be explaining along the way. Firstly, we'll need to write all the necessary variables. What we need are the run service for the loop, the player and its character, the root part of the character, and the humanoid. After that, we'll need a reference to the animations folder. And now, we'll create a table containing all three animations and we load them onto the humanoid. Now, let's create the main loop. Here is where the fun part comes. Oh yeah, and we'll need to play the animations first or else it won't work. We'll just use a simple for loop for this. The parameters for the humanoid play method are fade time, weight, and speed. But for now, we'll just use zero on all of them since we'll just set them with math later. Now we'll need the velocity of the humanoid, but without object space. Vector to object space for this matter since velocity uses vector 3. Without the vector to object space, this won't be relative to where we're looking at. So we'll need the humanoid root parts coordinate frame, C frame for short. And we'll convert the velocity's direction to the object space of the humanoid root parts C frame. Now we'll have a vector 3 according to the right and forward vectors. So if you're moving to the right and forward, it'll return 11, 0, minus 11. The first number, the x-axis, is the velocity relative to the root part's right direction. And the last number, the z-axis, is the velocity relative to the root part's forward direction. 16 is the actual velocity. But because circles are not square in this universe, both of them are 11,312 since it's locked to a unit. Now, for some reason, on R6 rigs, the humanoid root part is inverted and actually looks backward. Roblox, please fix. So if you're using R15, you may get a positive number. Now, since we don't want it to actually go off to, whatever the velocity is, we'll divide it by the humanoid's walk speed. And while we're walking, we'll get a number ranging from 0 to 1. We'll need positive numbers to actually set the weights and speeds. So we'll use math.ab's absolute to get the positive number. So now we can actually set the animation values. We'll need to know whether or not if the player is walking forwards and backwards. And since the root part is inverted on our six rigs, we'll use a less than operator. Now we set the weights using the adjust weight method. We set it accordingly to the variables we set before, like forward, backwards, right and left. After that, we set the speeds using the adjust speed method. We can adjust the speed according to the root part's velocity divided by the humanoid's walk speed. 
What I did was inefficient and you can just make a variable that references it. Now for the backwards direction. We'll just copy everything over and change the variables on the adjust weights. And since walking right or left are inverted when walking backwards, we'll change both of them to the opposite. And the adjust speed 2 will multiply the speed by minus 1. Since if you multiply 2 and minus 1, you'll get minus 2. We're done, but I forgot something, for replication purposes. So for some reason, Roblox does not like weights that go to zero, and they just stop the animation completely over other clients. So we'll need to put an epsilon on the clamp function. Be sure to use negative accordingly. And that's pretty much it. Let's test it out. Wow, isn't this beautiful? Not a lot of games do this on Roblox, even though it's pretty simple to set up. Or maybe they just don't like doing a bunch of animations. Anyways, I'll do a tutorial if you don't like doing a bunch of animation and just want to do one walking animation. It'll completely be procedural, but you'll still be able to animate it in Roblox. It is pretty complicated, though. Finally, we're done with the tutorial. If you liked it, Please be sure to like and subscribe so that the video gets to more developers and they can improve their game so that we'll get a bunch of awesome games on Roblox. Thank you for watching.